If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, April 9th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Christo Brock will join us shortly in the Finis Monitor to talk about a new opportunity he is directing and producing. Olympians Missy Franklin and Carolyn Joyce are the focus of a new documentary called Touch the Wall, which is almost done with post-production, but needs public donations to keep the project going. And Christo Brock joins us now via Skype from Venice, California. Christo, it's good to see you. How are you today? I'm great, Jeff. Thanks for having me on the show. Good to have you. So I, I met you uh, in September out in California, and you were telling me about this project. It sounded like it was a really good endeavor. Um, and now you're in post-production. Um, tell me, what, what is the most exciting part about making a documentary? Is it the filming part, or is it the editing? Well, the most glamorous part is shooting it, because we get to hang out with all these incredible swimmers and athletes. Um, but probably the more important part is the uh, the post production part. Where we're actually putting it together because we have more than 400 hours of footage, and there are a lot of a lot of films we could make. Um, but it's important to make the right one. Yeah, and that must be the most agonizing part is deciding how many, um, what what moments to put in, what moments to leave out, and like you said, you could probably have 10 films from all that footage. You could, you could, and probably a few, a few good films, but. You know, it's kind of important to tell the best story we can. Absolutely. So tell us what, in the end, is going to be Touch the Wall's story. Well, Touch the Wall's a story about a few things. It's a story about Missy and Kara and how they got to the Olympics. Um, but it's also a story about family. And uh, we spent a lot of time with the Franklins and um, got to know how they work. I think that probably sometimes they wish we weren't there. Um, but um, it was really, really interesting to see how their family worked uh, in supporting Missy and, and how other families work um, in the swim world. Because it's kind of, the, the I think, the backbone of, of a lot of these athletes is the support they get outside of the pool. Yeah, I can imagine you know the Franklins about probably better than anybody in the world now. We do. <laughs> but they're good friends, and they're great people. And, it, you know, uh, I have to say Grant and I um, became parents during the shooting of this film, uh, both of only childs for the moment. And uh, it was really great to see how uh, Dick and D.A. Uh, parented Missy. And, of course, they were older parents when they had Missy. Um, they were already sort of established in their careers. Um, and I think Grant and I have been able to take inspiration from that. And a couple of pointers. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. I'm sure. So uh, you and your co-director, Grant Barbito, what was the, uh, how did the idea come about to follow these two in their quest to make the Olympic team? You know, it's funny because uh, we were actually in the, in the throes of making another film, um, another documentary. And uh, Grant came to me and said, um, hey, my, my friend's got this daughter who's a swimmer, and she's really good. We should maybe consider making a film about her. And uh, I said, you know, that's great, Grant. I'm, I'm sure that um, your friend loves his daughter. I'm sure she's a good swimmer. Uh, but I'm not sure that it's enough for a film. And then uh, so he flew out to Colorado and shot Missy. And then <laughs> he's like, you got to come out and, and, and see what's going on. So then we flew out together. We hung out with the Franklins, talked to Missy. And we realized, oh, there's pretty good film here. Um, and then, you know, we started shooting with Missy. And then when Kara moved to Colorado and joined the Stars, that's when we really had um, the grist for a film. Because now we have um, this duality that we can um, make into a a complete 90-minute feature. 
And um, now you're in the editing process, and I understand there are some funding issues that you're hoping the public can help you with. Tell us about this Kickstarter campaign that you have going on right now. So funding documentaries is always a challenge, no matter what level you're at. Um, we've decided to go to Kickstarter, which is um, a crowdsource platform for creative projects like ours. Uh, and the idea is to, to sort of cut out the middle people who usually fund a lot of these documentaries and go right to the people um, that we're making a film for, um, swimmers. So people can go to our Kickstarter page, kickstarter.com, search Touch the Wall, and they can contribute directly to the film. And as a thanks, we give different rewards like a t-shirt or uh, posters or a swim lesson with Kara or a producer credit on the film. Yeah, if that's not any incentive to give some money, I don't know what it is to be able to see your name up on the big screen. <laughs> that's right. And also to be part of this project because, you know, I don't, I don't think there's really been um, a big swim film that's come out um, that really tells the story of the sport and the people in the sport. And uh, Touch the Wall is going to be the film that does that. Now, you're about halfway to your goal of $110,000. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. So, That's right. and you have until about April 22nd for people to donate, is that right? Exactly. No later. And we, we could have chosen a couple other crowdsourcing platforms. We chose Kickstarter. But um, one, of the, one of the things about Kickstarter is that you have to reach your goal. Because if you don't reach your goal, you don't get any of the funding. So it raises the stakes. And we certainly have a challenge ahead of us. But I'm pretty sure we can get there, especially if, if people... Um, get motivated in the last couple weeks here. If the goal isn't reached, what happens to the film? Well, we keep making the film. I mean, we're, we're editing it, you know, pretty actively now. It just becomes a little bit harder to make, and it, it's going to take a little bit longer because um, we'll have to look for those funds elsewhere. Um, but, you know, we really, we really want to reach our goal because there are a lot of people who back the project and uh, Grant and I would hate to let those people down. So we're, we're paddling hard to, uh, to make it to our goal. Well, to give our viewers a taste of what the film is about, I want to show a clip now of one of my favorite ones that's on the Kickstarter website right now of Missy and her father Dick talking about her Olympic medals. These are uh, little black jewelry cases. These, these are my, uh, my job in life now. You know, I'm gonna have to weigh these because you know what the, you know what they are. No, what are they? Krista. <laughs> As if you didn't. Because when you take all five of these and then put them in a backpack and then put them on your back and then go through security and airports, they get heavier every trip. It's the only reason I take him along. Sherpa. Yep. My Sherpa. Everybody needs a Sherpa. Everybody needs a Sherpa. And actually, these have been the thrill of a lifetime because um, the stories, the video, um, the films, the YouTubes, I mean, all of that's great. But when people, when people get to see these things and touch them, so it's they get so excited. I mean, children, adults, professionals, teachers. Can I see it? Can I take a picture of it? Can I touch it? Can I hold it? I mean, it's. So, uh, tell me when when was the first time that you met the Franklins? When did you first you know say I want I want this to be an official documentary? Well, Grant had done some shooting with uh, Missy and, and the Franklins in 2010. Um, and it wasn't until January of 2011 when I um, went out there and we all shot together. And um, it was just, you know, they're, they're just, they're special people. And uh, Grant and I are not swimmers. Um, so getting into this world of swimming was sort of this process of discovery. Um, that was fascinating. And we've discovered this incredible world that... Um, that we're going to tell a story about through the through the stories of these two characters of Missy and Kara. Yeah, we don't want to forget her, their coach Todd Schmitz, who's who's a and character in himself. He certainly is, 
and and Todd's great. I mean, he you know, he has brought Missy to these incredible heights. Um, and you know, one of the things that Todd always says is, um, you can't spell fundamentals without F U N. And he really does find a way to keep it fun, because you know, someone who's not a swimmer like me has trouble understanding how you get in the pool every day, follow that black line for two hours at a time. So <laughs> I find that I find that pretty impressive that Todd and all all the other swim coaches in the sport are able to do that and motivate their swimmers. So what was the biggest thing you learned about the sport? You know, not just specifically about Missy and her family and Kara and Todd and all that, but what did you learn the most about the sport in the past two years? Wow, there's a lot of things we learned. Um, you know, I think we, we talked a lot with Jack Roach, um, the junior national team coach, um, and he, he told us something really interesting, which is, you don't find swimming, swimming finds you. And I think, I think that's kind of true. I think there's a special kind of person who swims. Um, it's someone who, who, can, who can get themselves to practice every day. You know, who's someone who's committed to improving, who's committing to being fit. And, um, and also, uh, the other thing that, that I think we discovered, which is really interesting, is that there's, there's this kind of this... Um, culture of swimming, which is really interesting. It's kind of this very collegial culture in our minds. I don't know whether it's the fact that, you know, at a swim meet, you're watching Michael Phelps walk past you, or, you know, there's Ryan Lochte right, you know, a couple lanes away, or, or just the, the humility that one gets swimming, because it's, you know, it's, you don't always win. Um, but there's something about this sort of, um, uh, um, I don't want to say gentility, but there's something about the way swimmers treat each other that's kind of unique, I find. Have you uh, got any ideas about if you want to return to the sport and do another documentary on either someone or kind of a, an event? Well, I think we like to finish this one first. Yeah, and, I'm sure you And then we'll see where we go with the next one. <laughs> Well, uh, tell us about your, your background as a filmmaker. Um, so I, uh, after I went to film school out here in Los Angeles, I, um, I started working documentaries um, and worked on one called The Long Way Home that won the Academy Award in 1999 um, and then started editing sports documentaries. No, just kind of by coincidence. One of them was called Spirit of the Marathon, um, about the Chicago Marathon. And then another one was called Hood to Coast, which came out a couple of years ago. And uh, I've certainly worked on other films, um, but this is just kind of right along in that path. And uh, it's just kind of logical that me, a sports fan, gets to work on and produce a, a sports documentary. Why did you choose documentaries and not feature films? You know, it's funny. I think um, a little bit the way Jack Roach says that swimming finds swimmers, documentaries found me. Because uh, I love fiction films. I love going to them and watching them. But uh, there's this unique challenge in putting a documentary together because it's really, it's about real people and real lives. and um, There's this kind of truth that you can communicate through documentaries that's... Um, a lot more accessible, I think, than fiction films. Yeah, definitely true. Definitely, that's one of the, the highlights of documentaries that is sadly, you know, maybe the reason why people don't watch as many documentaries because maybe it's a little too real, but um, it definitely does. Uh, every time I watch a documentary, it really makes me think about my own life and the world outside. So, um, but you know, Jeff, I actually meet a lot, a lot of people nowadays who are, who tell me that you know I tell them I make documentaries, and they they look at me and go, "Oh, really? I love watching documentaries." And I actually think that there's been a bit of a shift in recent years, um, where people will watch documentaries where before they wouldn't. And I'm not quite sure what that's about. Whether it's because of reality TV or some other big documentary films um, being shown that. You know, I think we've gotten away from documentaries that you should watch. 
and our film is certainly a documentary that you're going to want to watch because it's going to be entertaining. It tells a story. I think we move more into that realm of telling stories with entertaining films. So I think people want to watch documentaries more. Well, we hope that they'll want to not only watch this one, but uh, get you to your goal of $110,000 so that we can uh, be able to see it on big screen. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christo, thank you so much for joining us today. Best Thanks, of luck uh, with the fundraising, and uh, we'll be following it in these next couple weeks. Great. Thank you. All right, so that was Christo Brock joining us in the Finis Monitor for today's Morning Swim Show. As he mentioned, they need your help to raise money to keep this project going, and there are only a few days left to donate. Go to kickstarter.com and type touch the wall in the search field to get to their homepage. You have until April 22nd to help them reach their $110,000 goal. And before we go, we want to make sure that you get another taste of this movie, so we're going to show you another clip to close out the show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching. swimming around water. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is, be it a lake, a river, uh, the ocean, they're comfortable in it. Being able to harness the power of the ocean is a, is a, is a different concept. I would love to do a workout like that once a week. I think everybody needs a break. Just kind of step away and get a different perspective from things. And so I think coming to the Keys, that just kind of gives everybody a different perspective on things.